our litter of puppies that was born in July has left by now. Trudy worked extremely hard to look after them and feed them well until they were all ready to leave for their new homes at around 8 to 10 weeks old. This is the follow-on of my first video and I want to share our experience of raising the puppies up to weaning. Nothing much happened in the first two weeks or so of the puppies' lives as they were blind and deaf and needed to be near or under the heat lamp all the time. But then, at two weeks old, their eyes started to open. How exciting to get up one morning and find the puppies gazing at you out of deep brown puppy eyes. Also, they started hearing noises and pushing themselves up on their stubby little legs in an attempt to walk around rather than crawl. It got very hot here at the end of July, so I needed to keep an eye on the temperature in their little den. And it was clear by looking at the thermometer in the den going above 30 degrees Celsius and the puppies huffing and puffing that things got too hot in there. High time to move them somewhere more airy but still sheltered. Nine there, Tim. I made a shady, dry, safe space for them in a little enclosure. Impossible for them to get out and wander off and get lost and Trudy could still get in when she wanted to feed them and spend time All with them. All you have to do is lie in the shade and sleep until Trudy comes back. Isn't that a life? Trudy is a very good mum. She regularly came out from her cool shady place under the house to climb into the enclosure, flop down and have her nine puppies crawl all over her and take a good long drink. At this age, the puppies still spent most of the time sleeping, but they were getting livelier. And of course, being able to see the world and their brothers and sisters around them meant they became more sociable as well. They still lost balance easily with their stumpy little legs and round plump bodies, but with every day they became more agile. When the puppies were one month old, I started switching the heat lamp off during the day. As the puppies then started to regulate their body temperature themselves more effectively. At night time, I left the heat lamp on though for another three to four weeks to keep the den at around 20 degrees. Let's at four weeks, it was also time for the puppies' drive. first outing to get their microchip inserted by our local vet. I'll pick up another one. Now, this one is the boy. The boy's going in there. Right. What you, another boy? In you go. Little one, no, don't eat Tim's uh, shoelaces. Come on then, little one. This is a legal requirement here in Ireland and we decided to get this done at quite a young age as some people were interested in getting a puppy from us and this made identifying the puppies somewhat easier. <laughs> quite heavy. I started offering the puppies some gruel made of dry kibble soaked in milk twice a day from week four to begin the weaning process, hoping to have them fully weaned around week eight to ten. When the puppies were well able to walk, I took the front door panel of their den away during the day so that the puppies could start wandering about in a small fenced-in outdoor area. Of course, I had to watch them carefully for the first few days to make sure they all found their way back when it started raining or when it got dark. 
As soon as I gave the puppies the choice of going outdoors, they used this option to go for their poos and wheeze and I hardly had to clean up an accident inside the den. They house trained themselves. The puppies now were well able to reach Trudy's teats from the ground standing up, so she could use the puppy feeding time to eat her dinner. This got the puppies more interested in eating solids too. And they absolutely love the odd pan and pot to lick clean of cooked or fried meat juices. At week five or six, they had a full set of baby teeth, razor sharp, and of course they love testing them on anything that got near their mouths. I fed the puppies outside now and usually at some point Trudy would come into the puppy pen to clean up after the puppies and offer them a nice milky dessert. Watching Trudy carefully, we started trusting that she knew more than we did about the right timing for feeding her puppies and gradually weaning them. And we left it up to her to jump in and out of the pen as she felt right. The puppies didn't always agree because milk, after all, is such an easy, pleasant food for a little puppy. And they developed into feisty, assertive little monsters defending their spot on Trudy's teats. She goes, well done Trudy, good girl. Trudy tried her best to divert from her milk. One day she turned up with part of a pigeon and presented it to her pups. They weren't quite sure how to deal with it at first, but quickly got the hang of this special treat. Always active, always hungry, between snooze and play, the puppy spent a lot of time watching Trudy's next move. Of course, there are Sandra's wellies as a distraction, but as soon as Trudy appeared, all interest in building a fun friendship with me and my wellies was lost and off they rushed to the milk bar. With the weeks going on, the puppies spent less time sleeping and more time playing. Games that involved testing their teeth were their absolute favourite. And it is amazing how quickly they can rip things apart and cause chaos in a once orderly puppy pen. They were a curious and sociable bunch, yearning to get to know the world around them. And of course, they had great interest in their immediate next door neighbors, the geese. Meanwhile, Trudy and Turnip picked up from where they had left things before the puppies, still loving their active and rough and tumble way of playing with each other. A pleasure to see Trudy wasn't completely weighed down anymore by motherhood. Time to film. Beep beep. Well, at least they're eating you now. They've been eating me for the last half hour. At two weeks old, I had started the puppies worming program and I wormed them every two weeks from then on. This became increasingly difficult the more active they became so that by mid-August, six weeks old, some of them already weighing over three kilos, the only way to keep them still for long enough on the scales was to tightly wrap them into a towel. 
I squirted the wormer into their mouth by syringe. Not their favorite food, but they didn't seem to be too bothered by it either. And it kept them healthy and ensured that they'd continue to gain weight steadily, especially important in the process of weaning. At around six weeks, the puppies were strong and agile little things and it was time to let them explore a bit more of the big wide world. Their puppy pen was right next to our garden, so we opened the gate and off they went. Puppies! They had a great time in there, chasing and playing and hiding, but also only too happy to come galumping back to me when it was feeding time. Another trip to the vet was due at eight weeks for their first dose of vaccinations to protect them against all these nasty bugs out there that can seriously affect or even end a puppy's young life. It was such a pleasure having this cheerful, lively bunch of puppies right outside our house. But of course, we couldn't keep them forever and most of them were lined up to leave us to their new loving homes soon enough. That was the plan from the start, but still sad to let them go, of course. At eight weeks, the puppies were pretty much weaned, apart from the occasional quick trip Trudy took into the pen to manage the build-up of milk whilst her body shut down production. The puppies were on three meals a day of special puppy food. Okay, that's what we're doing. Puppy love. Umi was first to leave us to her new family. After her last few weeks here, spent almost entirely outside in the wonderful summer weather, it was time for a bath to clean her up a bit and hand her over to her loving new owners, smelling of sweet puppy scent rather than farmyard manure. Bathing was not her favorite pastime yet, but Umi endured it bravely and without too many complaints. You'll be fine in no time, nice and dry. And one by one they went away and it got quieter and quieter around our place. Little Pip and Duke were the last to stay with us into October. It must have been hard for Pip to see her brother leave eventually, but it was such a delight for us to have her around for a bit longer. She is such a brave, confident adventuress and there's something very special about this boisterous puppy energy. Pip embraced life on our farm to the brim. We started training Pip just before she left. There's so much they need to know to get on in life. And the sooner they start learning, the easier for them and everyone. Pip now too has left us for a wonderful loving new home. But it is so nice how quite a few new owners stay in touch with us and send us updates of Trudy's and Turnip's puppies from all over Ireland. Thank you. And what about Trudy and Turnip? Turnip is always happy, puppy or no puppy. He is just that kind of dog. Trudy took a while to fully get back to normal physically. Nine puppies had worn her out somewhat, understandably, but she's back to her old, independent, lively self, enjoying our and turnips company, but also going off on little walks around our fields, free to do as she likes. And she deserves this freedom too. Well done, Trudy. Super mum you were.